All right, what's up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to SB Interviews, where today we're chatting to an act from Madrid, Spain called Alpha Circle, and we've got a few of the band members in today. Switching over to here, we have Alberto, Simon, and Lee. Say hello to people, to the viewers of this video. Feel free to introduce yourselves. Hello. Hi. Who's going first? I'll go first. I'll go first. All right. Uh, my, my name's Simon. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I play the drums in Alpha Circle. And I am Lee. I'm the front man for Alpha Circle. So a big, I think it's evening over there, isn't it? We're, uh, we're from Madrid and... Uh, we just want to say a thank you for, for having us on, Logan, on your YouTube channel. Hi to all your subscribers. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alberto, and I'm the guitarist of Alpha Circle, and I'm proud to be here. Excellent. Nice. Fantastic. We have got the introductions completed. The first stage of the... <laughs> The first stage of the interview has been done. All right. Um, what do you want to say about your music? Because you guys have just put out a new song, right? Yeah, Simon, do you want to you speak about that? Yeah, yeah, sure. We, we have just put out a new song. Um, it's been a long time coming. We've had a year and a half of difficult times like everyone. Um, but we're really happy and really excited to, to get back on the music scene. Um, the last 18 months we've been planning on recording a lot of things and releasing some new songs over the next few months and we had one acoustic gig but we're planning on playing uh some you know proper concerts uh, over the next few months and we're just really happy to get back and just enjoy music and feel that energy live it makes a massive difference so, so you, so you guys are able to to do some live stuff in future. Is that my understanding? Because I'm not sure what it's like over in your part of the world at the moment. Yeah, I mean it's a limited, um, um, how do you say, forum or li limited uh, venue, like in terms of capacity. But as long as you're sat down, there's no dancing, unfortunately, which sucks. Yeah. You no know, music, you dance, but we got to sit down at the at the bar. Um, but I mean, we are able to do some gigs. In fact, Alberto and I've got an acoustic one next Friday. And I think in November we've got one in um, the center of Madrid, which might be a bit more open, a few more people. Hmm. But what about in New Zealand? Is it are people playing live gigs again? Or? Uh, where, I, I have no idea what's going on. Honestly, like we, some of, one part of the country is in like level four, which is the hardcore nobody does everything stay home one and then the rest of the countries and like the yeah you, you're allowed out of your house but you've got to wear a mask all the time stage right so uh cool. the music scene's okay but you guys i've noticed you guys have been very active on your social medias and stuff like that but but before we get get to that stuff currently where did you guys start when did you guys get started with music alberto when did you begin uh, in the music scene uh, I, I start like a piano classical concerts uh, and when I was around 12 or 13 and then continue in in a band and but I think in with a band around I don't know 18 years old or something like this and then go band to band until alpha circle band to band thrive on the next one <laughs> yes <laughs> I, um, I studied actually performing arts and, and acting at the national youth theater so sort of singing was a part of of what i studied but it wasn't really what i initially wanted to go into until i got asked to front a band in england and i thought actually i like i quite like this more than uh, more than the acting so I've played in bands since then and uh, taken it to another level, I think, or I hope, with Alpha Circle. Did you sign uh, my... Uh, I, um, my, my mum told me this, so maybe she's lying, but um, she's a big liar. No, I'm kidding. I was tapping my foot to like, the intro of a cartoon that I used to watch when I was really young. And uh, it was pretty much in time, so nothing's changed. Uh, and, um, and my dad bought me a small keyboard and I started to get into music when I was very young and um, started having a go at lots of instruments but I ended up playing the, the drums in my bands and, uh, and there we go, it's the, the long and short of it really. I'm very happy to be a drummer because I can, I've got an excuse for making noise when I'm warming up 
as opposed to the guitarist that never turn the volume down when they're tuning the guitar for some reason. Do you not find that true, Logan? Yeah, I, I, you know what? I think everybody can relate to the little quirks of being in a band, right? Like you guys have been in a band for like three or four years or something at this point, yeah? Yeah. Do you know what? Before I forget, when I watched the video of you um, uh, reviewing the EP, the four songs we had on Spotify, I popped when you said that comment about bass guitarists. I was laughing my ass off. When you said that the bass guitarists, that they're a different breed. We've had, we've had experience of that as well. Although Lewis is great. Yeah, Lewis is great. <laughs> but they're certainly quirky. Yeah, like, um, you know, I think it's just some some kind of unfortunate stereotypes. You know, you'll get the people that don't take the instrument as seriously and then they'll be the one that people talk about. And then the ones that do take the instruments more seriously, they're the more kind of humble ones a lot of the time, aren't they? So you don't really hear much of the good stuff, so you only hear the kind of air stuff. Um, but luckily for you guys, you're pretty competent, aren't you? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we have our ups and our downs. We, we'll have a big argument, but then we'll hug it out. It's like being in a relationship. <laughs> and so, like, what 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 was like the journey from when you guys got together to when you released your first song? I think we we start with like a jam with something like a jam, and then uh, we are um, uh, increasing our uh, concept of music together. And in when we have when we had circles we think oh we have to to record it and and to to show to the world this song and they with it because it's quite a thing nowadays like you know you know when you think about the amount of music that's out there how did you guys even decide the direction you wanted to go in for the music that you were making i mean we've all been in several bands um and Personally, I never released anything with a band prior to, to Alpha Circle. And uh, I think because we had the chemistry and I don't think we were being boastful, but we, we enjoyed our songs uh, a lot. And we thought, well, you know, you know, friends and family like the music can't take their word for, for everything, right? But people started asking, they were like, where can we get the music? Where can we download it? Like, well, we've only got this three minute recording on Lee's phone that he's dropped in the corner of the room <laughs> and all you can hear is the hi-hat. And um, we thought, okay, we, we have to record this. Um, even if it doesn't go far, it's just like a personal achievement. And we're really proud of the things we're doing in this band. And it's like, um, that's what it is. It's like having the, the disc on the wall, you know, uh, this is what we've done. And, you know, going platinum would be amazing, but at the moment, you know, going paper would be great, but it's just to have that achievement and that product. And uh, we're very proud of it. Because, like, are you guys, like, fully self-produced at this point? I'm just trying to figure out how you went from that cell phone recording to, like, the release of the track. Did you record yourselves or how'd that go? Um, we're, well, Albert, did you want to tell about TRK then? Yes. Uh, at one point, uh, we sing with TRK music. Uh, and in this TRK music, I'm the the producer, and oh. then we self-produce ourselves because we we have uh, the studio that we need, and we can self-produce uh, together, and we we obtain in these songs uh, something like in in a difficult time like COVID, uh, we we can do something uh, thanks to TRK Music and we have to self-produce ourselves. Yeah, a lot of studios closed. Um, obviously, it's an enclosed space, so you know, having more than a couple of people together was just crazy. Yeah. But luckily, we had this studio where we were fortunate enough to, to be able to, to record and and have fun and actually enjoy music instead of worrying, you know, it takes you out of that pandemic for, for a few moments and, you know, you appreciate that. Cool. So basically you just utilized the technology that you had to connect with each other and get the stuff done that you needed to, right? Yeah. Yeah. We all chip in. We've all, we all do our own part. So I think that that's why we work so well as a, as a team, even if we do have our little scuffles, um, 
we, 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 we're growing. I think that's this, like Lee said, it's like a relationship. And, you know, at the start, you're like, everyone's like, I'll do this. I'm better at this. But now we've learned, you know, who's good at what and how to work with each other instead of against each other. So what do you anticipate the biggest change like for when you're able to work together? Like, what do you anticipate the big, big change is going to be when you're actually able to jam in person more often? New singer. <laughs> um, Lee, do you want to answer this one? Well, I mean, we we have rehearsed um, recently, haven't we? I mean, we we our rehearsals are more structured now. I think just because of um, time concerns. So Alberto's taken over the sort of we've given him the sort of control in terms of how we utilise that time in the rehearsal space. Um, whether it be that we rehearse a specific song that we're going to record, or if we have to record. Called, uh, so we, to, we have a concert and, and we have to rehearse the, the set list, for example. So now having a little bit more discipline in terms of the rehearsals means that we can relax a bit more and not feel like we've, we're wasting our, our rehearsal time. You know, you can still have jam and improvise and have fun, but you have, we have to be prepared so that when we go to the recording studio, we make the most of the time that we, we got there and that we're prepared for the concerts when we play concerts. I mean... That that actually makes it like sounds kind of dumb when you think about it, but that's a very rational way of approaching it, right? You, you don't yeah. want to be one of those bands who just goes to a studio and kind of messes around. You want to go there and get your songs recorded, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. I mean, believe me, we've done that. Like we have messed them up. <laughs> we go there and have a few beers, and uh, two hours or three hours pass, and we've only played Red Hot Chili Peppers, and we're like. Probably should practice right on. <laughs> but like to be fair to you, to be fair to you guys, right? Um, like, I don't know if it was like the old days, if it was like the old days and you had a studio giving you an advance, right. For like yeah. the recording you were doing. And then you were sitting there drinking beers and playing red hot chillies. It might be a different situation. I think if, if we could get away with that, it would mean we're already famous, to be honest. I think once you get to that stage, then you can do whatever you want. But, uh, no, we, we, we enjoy the studio and it's a very different feeling, uh, playing, uh, recording. Um, I think it could go two ways. Number one, you you start to think, oh, I want to change this, I want to change that. You get lots of ideas. Um, but at the same time, you really concentrate and build the music because you know that's kind of like the the final product, the final version. So the thing is when we personally most appreciate what we've written and what we've composed because we know it's kind of like the final final tape. Because each of your tracks has its own sort of unique identity, right? The ones you've put on Spotify and the other map platforms. Like, how would you describe the music that you've made so far? Oh, that's such a difficult question, isn't it? Because you said, like you said, that each, I mean, even in the review, you were talking about how each song has its own personality. And uh, to be honest with you, it was a little bit of a concern at first because the sounds that we were composing were, we thought, oh, maybe that's too heavy. Maybe that's too far. And in the end, we just thought, you know what? We, we are very clear on our concept, which is we want to we wanna have um, you know, those catchy hooks to the songs. Uh, we want to utilize uh, all of the musicianship of, of each member of the band. I mean, Alberto's a, a principally, or he was a pianist. But, um, so that's why we have two songs with the piano, because we want to show, look, this guy who plays the piano quite well, in my opinion. <laughs> But then we saw also with uh, grooving and with circles in general, we, we can see there's a reaction from when we play live, you know, so it, it is more of, maybe that's more of the direction that we're going to take. However, we don't want to limit ourselves to, to not being able to do a ballad or, or use the piano, for example. We, we, we know it, we want to tell stories. We want to create a lyric that people can relate to. Um, and uh, good melodies. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, guys. I think we have two sides in the in our group. One more emotional and inspiring, and another more funny and uh, party thing. Mm. And we try to connect the sides to in in one group. And that's good because you need. 
it's you know sometimes you get bands and musicians who can play phenomenally well but you don't really feel it you know what i mean it's just very technically impressive and then sometimes you can get just the emotional side of things but then you kind of that emotion is carried on through tracks and nothing really changes with the music itself so you guys are trying to combine those and that's good yeah exactly that, that's them. right i think uh, in a concert for example for us is a uh, travel and when we uh, select the songs and the order of the songs, uh, we think in a, in a travel, in one hour and a half, we have to go from this to this. And we use the funny songs or the, the strong songs or the emotional songs in order to, to move the people for our, our path. Wow, actually, I'm really impressed. Like, this is more thought than I've heard a lot of musicians put into this stuff. This is really good. Like, how would you compare your most recent single, which is, it, it's Phoenix, Phoenix and the, but Phoenix, Phoenix and Butterflies. Yeah, Phoenix mm -hmm. and Butterflies. I, I was going to say Phoenix and the Butterflies, and I was like, no, Phoenix and Butterflies. <laughs> how would you describe that to previous material you, that you've made? Simon, do you want to? Yeah, I'll take this, yeah. Um, I think we're kind of maturing uh, with our sound. Um, evidently what we play in the studio, what we record has to be represented somewhat on stage because, you know, we love playing live. Um, however, there are more layers to this. Um, we have one guitarist, one well, pianist and guitarist, but we've added some extra layers in there because we wanted to create a, something a little bit more complex, but, you know, keeping it simple enough for, for everyone to follow the song. I think you mentioned before, sometimes it's just all over the place. So I think most of our structures to songs are quite poppy, um, but there are little bits of uh, rock and a little bit of uh, jazz and blues, even if it's just a few licks, it's kind of like an inside thing or for musicians like yourself that would recognize it. But um, when we started off, I think we came up with the very typical, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and I'm not going to say playing it safe, but just keeping it kind of simple and, and nice and clear and so you can move to it. And we're going to do exact same thing, but just uh, be a little bit more creative and confident with our music. Um, some people will just say, keep it simple. And that's true. Simplicity is key. Um, but at the end of the day, you need to show your own personality. So instead of just playing four chords, what Alberto typically will do is when he's playing chords in a song, he'll add a kind of inflection in there or a couple of extra notes. And I'll do the same with the drums, sometimes way too much. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that's always toned down when we're recording. And the same thing with Lee, I think, lyrically, um, even if there's something that sounds romantic, we try and keep it a little bit more metaphorical so more people can relate to it, you know, yeah. more universal. And I tried to utilize that falsetto, which would be more, more and more yeah exactly you don't want to be writing a love song and literally using the person's name in it because <laughs> then it's only going to be specific to the yeah, person so whose happened. name it's about that's happened logan yeah it's happened it's very yeah. easy in spain though all, all the girls names in spain rhyme so you just have you know like maria um that's the only one i can think of um but yeah they all end in a so you could just create a, a five minute song with with female names because, like, obviously, like, a consideration if you're going to do live stuff at some point is the music scene that you have where you're at. And I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of musicians around you at the moment. Like, are there a lot of musicians that do the kind of stuff that you do? Or is it, like, all over the place? What's it like? In Spain, I think the, the most popular music at the moment, at least on the radio, is, is reggaeton. So I don't know if you've heard of that. I, uh, my Have partner you? is Chilean, so I hear it quite a bit. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I think we've got like a, a niche. I mean, there are bars and venues which have sort of pop rock. Um, and, and we've got a little bit of uh, a following. Um, so I think, that, but I think generally in Spain, it's, it's more reggaeton, but there are different genres of music which have a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I think urban music, is the, the the normal music that that we can listen on radios, and there are a few of uh, radios that try something different, or music in English, or but yeah, it, yeah. it's difficult in Spain because the the level of English 
as you can <laughs> see, is not good. And we, we are always uh, translate the films and it's always in Spanish. Su, yeah. su, su inglés es muy bueno. Sí, sí, su inglés. Oh. Eh, sí, muchas eh. gracias. ¿Qué? Hablo ¿Qué? un poco español uh, porque mi, 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 uh, mi, uh, mi novia. So, so I, yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it would ah, be ah, difficult. <laughs> Well, cambiamos por español ahora, por el resto de la entrevista. Imagine the subtitles. Let's go. Cool. Miso again, español. <laughs> <laughs> Hablo un poco español. <laughs> Hablo un poco español. No más que por poco. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, for people wanting to sing in English in Spain, it probably would be a little bit difficult. I can understand that. So how do you get around that? I think, I think in... Oh, Just, uh, we only not, uh, notice this thing in the radios mm -hmm. and is because when we are uh, playing a concert uh, I think our public uh, don't have a problem with English because they love the music and the other is is okay Mm. Uh, you know, on radios is is more difficult than on 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 some pubs and but normally when we are in a concert uh, people enjoy a lot includes in english or yes yeah i mean that was a melody if you have a good a catchy melody and a, a yeah. good beat people move their body anyway um yes. so it's not really necessary to understand the lyrics especially in a in a live gig um if if we're playing it on Spotify or whatever and someone relates to the... It's, I think people re relate to different things with music. I pay a lot of attention to the lyrics, but not a, there are other people that don't even think about what the song's about. But I think it depends on the person, doesn't it, Simon? Yeah, I completely agree with both of you for once. Um, everyone listens to music for different reasons. I mean, classical music or, 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 or typical genres that don't have words obviously tell a story in a different way. And yeah, as Alberta said, if we're playing live, then people, amazingly, and I think we, we were very humbled the first time people were singing the song back to us loud, not just our yes. friends, you know, people that support us and listen to it on replay, but it's incredible. And it was, and now it's several songs and most of the public aren't, you know, native English speakers. So we're, we're very humbled by the fact that people can connect to us in a second language as well. Um, yeah, and it's, it's we amazing. think about them. we write the lyrics. It is something that we, when we're constructing, especially the chorus, we want to make it. Um, uh, one, you want to make it catchy, but you also want to make it sort of easy for for everyone to sing. Accessible, um, yeah. Yeah, so we're not adding words with lots of syllables um, or, or words that might be tricky for I don't know other nationalities to pronounce. We have a tricky song. Yeah, we have a song called Tricky, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, when you look at songs like, I, I know, like Despacito, but even Gangnam Style, you know, Korean stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> so those songs were huge globally, and people probably weren't able to understand. Like, yeah. uh, my, myself personally, Despacito, I wasn't familiar with the language at that point, but I like the music, and I don't know Korean, but Gangnam Style was fire, right? So it's just one of those yeah. things. You're absolutely right. Uh, Despacito's got a, a beautiful melody. I heard it on, um, on, a, the, uh, on the piano and also with a violin, and it's a beautiful melody. Yeah. So that's a good yeah. example. Not if you, do, you don't need to understand the lyrics to know that it's a good song. And like speaking of the chord progression for that song, what, isn't that a very common chord progression for Despacito? Yes, is the the pop uh, chords. There are uh, four chords that in Bob mm -hmm. is used all the time because the grades of these chords uh, uh, makes some feeling in the people, and they use a lot. But for me, it's okay. You, you can use these chords in a good way. Or you can do the same all the time. Now mm -hmm. I can listen the same song in 100 songs, you know. But you mm -hmm. can use this course correctly and in a new way, because the chords are uh, limited, you know, limited. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but uh, the, 
I, I think there are good songs with this in this course and we love these songs and there are the same songs all the time so for, for you guys like how deep do you want to go with the stuff because we've spoken a lot about the way we structure them to be catchy and stuff like that mm. are you looking at doing it any like experimental stuff at any point just to really kind of see what you can get away with or is there a focus I, I've with been asking i've been asking i want to do prog rock i want to do an hour long song logan um <laughs> <laughs> i don't even think alberto be up for it but yeah it's um i think we've um we kind of experimented a little bit um but we don't want to go too crazy i mean we have got a pure jazz song um Naturally, I don't think we're jazz players, but we'd like to release that, at least play at some point, as pure jazz. Um, and, you know, we, we have a, a heavy song, which is, it's not death metal, but it is, it's hard rock. Yeah. Um, with, a, with, a, with a double kick pedal, but I think that it would be a bit crazy to just put that in the middle of the five songs we've got at the moment. It would um, be strange uh, after cold. <laughs> it would be strange. <laughs> But I mean, like when we do cover songs, I think there we can experiment a bit more. We've done, you know, Linkin Park, Foo Fighters, and although it's kind of within our genre. Um, um, I've got a question for you, Simon. I'm um, talking about experimenting. We got this song called Don't Take, take His Job. Don't Take His Job. No, no, but it's interesting because he's a drummer as well, I think. Aren't you, Logan? Yeah. Are you... I play you guitar, know? bass, drums, piano, ukulele, and a few other things. So, so we got this, yeah. to record called 1995, and I think it's going to be like a clubbing sound. That's what I hear with the melody. So I wonder if Simon would be against using a an electric drum or an effect instead of actually playing the drums in that song. Mm. It's going to be with electric drums, definitely. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, yeah, I think. But yeah, you it, we we always go with the song, and this is a good thing. Uh, of us, we go with the song and with the that the song needs, and I think mm. it's a uh, um, electric drum. Okay, so we got two drummers here. So what what's your opinions on that? Do you think it takes away the personality of the drummer, or do you think it adds to the sound of the song that you're looking for? I, I think the quickest sort of and simplest response is: if you could, do you guys know about the native complete plugins that they have, and they have battery. And you're just provided with 500 drum kits mm -hmm. that I can plug straight into my electronic drum kit. I can make yeah. my drum kit sound like any of 500 drum kits. Now, if I choose the sample set that is the one that everyone uses, it's going to sound generic. But if you just use one that isn't used as much, it's instantly creative, right? Yeah. 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 I don't mind. I don't mind that. I think um, if. We're in control. It sounds a little bit arrogant, but if you're playing an electric drum kit, you're still playing. Um, I think we'd like to keep that because nowadays you could pretty much produce anything. You don't even need to sing because you can just speak and manipulate the words, and you know you can do everything electronically. But uh, I think it sounds a little bit cliche, but keeping music alive is uh, a massive reason, you know, uh, because if if physical instruments disappear, you know. It's that everyone can do it, and when everyone does something, it doesn't necessarily mean that more is better, you know. So keeping, you know, the instruments alive is important. Oh, like, don't get me wrong. I, there are, like, two rules for me, right? Like, if you're going to record electric drums and you're wanting to do them professionally, don't, like, don't quantize. Like, don't quantize the drums if you want it to sound, like, organic. Because you ought mm -hmm. to be playing well enough to be able to, like, if you're releasing a song... You don't want to have to correct every single bar that you're playing on an electric kit, right? Like, you wouldn't do that on an acoustic kit, would you? Well, no, not but hopefully there are no mistakes, but yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but like, then there's also the issue with humanization. Like, on something like Reaper, right? You can. You can you can set a random difference in the loudness of the MIDI notes by 10 or 15%, but it still sounds like a robot. So, if you played an electric kit, yeah, it would sound like it would probably sound fine because you're actually playing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. I still do think you can tell the difference um, sometimes. I, I, I think you can tell the difference between someone that's played the drums and someone that's programmed the drums. Uh, but nowadays, as you said, you can make 
an electronic kit sound like it's real and actually loads of I think I, I watched the video the other day I was surprised that the top 20 bass lines that weren't actually played on the bass and it's, it's amazing what you can reproduce I think we all know this with technology now but um, then it just I don't know it's like a, a film you're, you're, you're creating a film with, with no actors and it's just a cartoon which is fine if you want a cartoon but we don't want that we want a real life action song I guess but like that's what I appreciate about your music is that I'm not listening to someone like tippy tapping on like like some sort of like beat machine or something. I'm liking that I can hear the acoustic drums. I'm liking that you weren't too self conscious to keep the sound of the acoustic drums. You didn't try and sample over them and stuff like that. And I like mm. that I can hear the bass and the guitar because it's so refreshing. Because a lot of people do just not play the instruments or allow themselves to play in. Thank you for actually playing your instruments. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for us, it's, it's important. Sometimes when we are in the studio, and I don't know, I am recording it as, and sounds, a lot of people say, oh, this is not good, this is, but for us, it's more important the feeling that a little sound of strings uh, or, or something like this, we, we look for the, for the feeling. And for mm -hmm. us, this is music you know and we, we don't need to clean everything but because we put a computer to make music and it's, this is all okay we need this kind of things and the, the sounds of the guitar or drums or or the vibrate of the, of the vocalist is necessary it's music Oh. Yeah, a lot of people don't notice anyway. Like when you have like a tiny little vibration on the string, yes. or you know, I don't know, a, a, a mistimed rim shot or something. Most listeners don't notice, but I think sometimes we're really fussy as musicians, and we like cringe, and we're like, oh no, that can't go in there. Oh. But, you know, some of the biggest songs have things like a door closing in it, and someone shouting or you know <laughs> stuff like that. So I know you in. <laughs> Oh, but that's the beauty of it, dude. Like, you just, like, because you guys are just, well, I love, I love how authentic you guys are whilst also being so careful about what you release. Because you're talking about these tracks. You've How many songs do you think you've written total? Oh, I think we, we counted recently because we had a, we had to do, a, I think it was like an hour and a half or two hour gig. And I think we've written about, we did our, our last gig, we, did, we didn't do any covers, did we? No, we've got 20, 25 um, yeah. songs that we've written, and uh, we've, re we've recorded, so Phoenix is the last one we've recorded. Uh, we've also recorded one called Life of So Divine, and we've, the plan is to record another three, hopefully, before Christmas. But, yeah, I mean, the process is very, it's, it is quite tricky to, uh, to choose which song goes next, and sometimes there's a lot of different opinions. But in the choice of Phoenix, for example, um, Lewis is quite prominent in. The, I don't know if you've um, you've heard the song, uh, but Lewis, the bass is quite prominent in the song, and and it was very much Lewis's uh, baby that song. So it's kind of a we love the song as well, but the release is, is very much for Lewis. Sorry, did you say the bass? Yeah, I noticed. Did you say the bass was quite prominent? Yeah, yeah, I did. I he was up in the upper registers, like he was doing right. this bright stuff. He wasn't just playing with the root notes, and it was so cool. Yeah. yeah. Yes. During the productions, uh, we, we have an idea in the verse uh, that the, is the, the, the song in the verse uh, have to be uh, dark. And with a bright guitar, it, it will be impossible. But the dark thing is the bass, and the, but the draw of the bass is, um, I think, is a pop thing, but mm -hmm. with a dark sound. And for me, this is the this is the thing of the song, almost yeah. in yes. the key personality of the song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, we, we, in the next few songs that we'll be releasing, Lewis's uh, role hasn't changed, but yes. he's really he's really um, being a lot more creative, and uh, there's more cohesion between myself and and him. And actually, the last song we composed is. Um, it, 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 we start playing, you know, like the, the bass, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the bass pedal, um, the bass drum and, you know, kind of like single notes on the bass. And then we stick together and then flourish off to different directions, but it works. And I think um, it's nice to 
to be able to play in time with the, the bassist because you have that connection. Um, and also, if he makes a mistake, uh, it's definitely not my fault because I'm always in time. So that's nice. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do, right? You're there. <laughs> drum is always right. That's what they say. <laughs> what about that time that you threw a drumstick when we were doing a concert? It went into the crowd. Oh, that's because someone asked me for it. Or that yeah. gig. You slipped out your hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just uh, sweaty. Yeah, drummer's nightmare. But no, someone was like, give me a drumstick. It's like, there's 100 people here. Who am I going to hit in the head? Yeah, well, we, I think we just, it's, it's taken a, a little while, but now we're, you know, we're, we're, it's the happiest and most creative we've been. And we just, we just want to, you know, just record it and put it out there, get all the uh, cover art done and send it to our friends and family. And if they like it, great, people can enjoy it. And we, we like to make people smile and, and dance. And the, the feedback we've had has been beyond what we ever expected. Uh, um, you know, we're not we're not rich and famous. We don't necessarily we're not doing it for that. It would be nice. I don't know if you've got any friends uh, hey. that can press that button. But you know, we've had people send us videos of them dancing to a song, or just the other day, um, Lee. Do you want to say what you found? That <laughs> sounds weird. What you found on the internet when you were looking for uh, the band? Yes. So we've had a little bit of press with this new release um, in in Spain. Probably more than. We, we usually have in Spain, because usually uh, how any sort of traction we get is, fr is from England or from America. Uh, but we've had a bit of press, so I was looking in, in Google, and I typed in Alpha Circle, and I saw there was the chords to learn circles, which is one of our songs. On, uh, was it on ukulele or on, on guitar? That was on the fun. ukulele, yeah. I took a screen guitar, yeah. the, the WhatsApp group, and I was like, this is insane. Who did this? Yeah, was it you? Was it you, Alberto? Awesome. It's a dream. <laughs> Some girl uploaded it to Cordify, I think it's called, is it? Yeah, Cordify. Yeah. Which, I mean, never in our wildest dreams did we think that, that that sort of thing would be possible or that we'd have uh, the streams that we've got. Because, like, when we got together, it was, it was really just for ourselves. We wanted to make music and, and be creative. And like Simon said, if, you're, if your friends and family like it, and you can usually tell when they're being polite, um, then that's cool. And if some, if, but someone else that's not connected to the band, if they like it, and you reach one person, it's like I don't know. There's some sort of um, I don't know, some sort of power or some sort of feeling in that that's it's quite infectious. Well, I, I think it's the that combination was... of like having your friends and family like it, but also having someone like your music enough to to learn it by ear and then put it on the internet because that's that's the two important areas the people closest to you liking it and people like outside yeah. of that circle way eh? exactly yeah yeah it's quite it's humbling to be honest um what i probably should have been, um logan about <clears throat> lewis um was we initially started simon alberto and me uh the band um, we experimented with various uh, bases but lewis came into the band uh later and i think in phoenix and butterflies you really see that he's now found his place, he's comfortable, and, and like Simon was saying, there's a sort of an evolution of the sound, and we're getting more and more comfortable with that, and, and confident, and, it, and we think what he's playing is really cool, and that motivates you. That's honestly, like, huge, because it can be really difficult being, like, a independent musicians, can't it, right? And you need to support each other. Because it can be brutal trying to find a place in the music industry, no matter where you are. So the fact that you're trying to support each other and giving each other a chance to grow and develop, that's really cool. Like, genuinely. Well done. Thanks, man. It's not just each other as well. We, we have a lot of friends um, and, and, you know, contacts that are musicians. And uh, I think that I, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but, you know, people that do play live music, um, I think we need probably more support because you know these especially where i'm from london and i know that um over the last 15 years the the live music scene has died out a little bit you know that tradition of going to a pub or a gig on a friday night it's disappeared a bit in favor of a different type of leisure let's say but i think that musicians do need to band together and uh, and support each other you know so invite us to New Zealand so we can play. Cheers, Logan. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to. 
I got family um, over there, so it's Logan really? and Dave. I got cousins over there. We can, uh, we've got accommodation. Uh, just, just stay away from Auckland because that's where all of these issues are happening. No, no, I'm not trying to be a uh, mean or anything. Oh, okay. It's just that they tend because they're the big city where the international airport is. If there's an issue, that's the place that gets shut down. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it's just, yeah. But um, because that's why I asked about an EP or an album because it seems like you guys are about ready to release something like that again. You know, like or to release something like with those twenty tracks. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was, I was gonna. I don't know what uh, what the music about yourself that you've been recording, but we found that it seems like the music industry um, artists are more releasing singles because, like with Spotify and things like that, it seems like maybe if you release an album, it depends how famous you are. Most, but some songs get lost, so we're at the moment focusing on singles and, and sort of doing that as a project because, like you said, each song for us has its own story, so we want to give it the the time um, publicity that it deserves each song. Yeah, so you're right. That singles is, I think, we're, we're trying to try and record with more frequency and uh, and try and get singles out more than focusing on an album. I think. No, that's totally fair. Honestly, I feel like it's a trick question. Me even asking about that stuff <laughs> nowadays because <laughs> it is expensive to record an album. And then it can be absolutely mm. soul crushing. I, I, dude, I have seen, I have reviewed music from artists that have put years into albums and they've put so much time into making the album that they haven't, they don't know how to promote it. Or when they started the album, the industry was completely different. Like, how's the industry mm. changed for you guys since you started? Uh, I think the way we started, I mean, now let's just say the last, not give it away our age the last uh, 20, 30 years, probably you have to go back, I'd say 50, to, to notice that people started to put in filler. And, you know, I've not studied this, but uh, personally, when you start realizing that there's a lot of filler, and you start skipping, and um, our attention span now over the last five, 10 years with technology and, you know, Facebook and what's that? And, you know, like everything around us, we, we can't, you know, you can't spend more than 30 seconds without being distracted. So for someone to sit there and listen to 10, 8, 10, 12 songs, it's, it's very difficult. Um, they? Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's really important to get the hook um, right from the first 20 seconds of a song. I mean, that's why in circles we come straight in with the vocals and the, and the, the bass uh, slides, isn't it? Hmm. And that's what we're trying to do with our, with our music. A little bit more about the uh, the music than the the question, which was uh, how the industry changed. But I think in terms of um, sales and stuff, I mean artists obviously don't make a lot of money from from streaming, so that's kind of taken away uh, an income from the artists. And so there's more of a focus on live gigs, I suppose. And that's why a lot of bands have come back together and done reunions and stuff. Um, that's the financial side of it. But um, in in terms of working in the music industry. Um, it's just, it's it's a dog eat dog world and you know, each cent or penny, wherever your your currency is, 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 is squeezed to the limit now. Um, not saying it wasn't before, but the traditional band being signed after playing in the park, you know, like that kind of dream um, doesn't really exist. I'm, I'm sure it does happen for some people that get picked up on YouTube or stuff. But, you know, you really have to make an effort now because so many people can make music, which is great. You know, we want music, but it's so easy for someone to just say, I've got a computer, I've got a program. I'm going to design a soundtrack for this film, you know, a 60 piece orchestra. And um, lots of things have changed. But I think as, as long as you have the passion to to do what you do, and enjoy what you do and put your music out there, then you'll get your followers and you'll, you'll get people to enjoy it. Um, and the people will appreciate the fact that you sat there playing the guitar instead of, you know, just pressing your key and, and using auto tune. Yeah, because like at the end of the day, it's human human beings, we want a, we want a connection to something, right? Mm. It's not just about benefiting from something via a chemical reaction to the music. 
we want to actually have a connection to the artist or the band that we're listening to in a way that's meaningful. And that comes from live shows a lot of the time, doesn't it? But it also comes from the way that people interact with each other now on social media and streaming and so like, do you guys have you, what are you guys like on all that social media stuff? I, I'm think, I seem to be the most active on it, uh, but I kind of feel like it's my responsibility as well. It's like being the, the front man, you know? Um, but sometimes, I mean, it, you think that it would be a, it would be easier you know, if you had some someone who could do that for you, but we're not in a position that we can do that. So you have to kind of you have to be active and you have to be approachable and and um, you know I, I think there's a lot of benefits to it as well. To be honest, that we we've, we've managed to get in contact. I'll give a shout out. There's a girl from um, Italy called she's got an Instagram called Laura Meets Musician, and she watched us do a live stream and got in touch with us and, and she wanted to do uh, an interview with us. And the next thing you know, she's drawing pictures of the band and, uh, yeah, and amazing, yeah. drawing pictures of uh, the Phoenix and Butterflies. And, and it's nice that we've got, we've met this person via social media by just playing a, an acoustic session live. And, uh, and now we've got a, a follower from uh, Torino, no? Turin, I think she's So that sort of yeah. thing, social media. The other, but the other, you know, the other side of it is that it's, it's constant. So um, you, you kind of need you need help with it definitely. It's an effort. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a, hard, it's a lot of hard work, um, and you got to stay on top of things and trends. And it's, it's a bit of a nightmare. It's like having a really strict diet plan and you counting calories and knowing what time to do stuff. But uh, you know, thanks to technology, we you know we're in, we're doing this interview. Um, yeah, yeah, Lee's right. It's Lee's right. I mean, once you get to a big stage, you need someone. You need to outsource that kind of stuff. But at the same time, you know, the, the musicians in the band have to main, you know, spend a lot of money on their instruments, and Lee just needs to buy throat suites. So that's why he has to do the, the social networks. Well, I mean, I think at the end he's of the good, day, he's really good. At it. I must, I must credit Lee. He's very good at, at what he does. So. Good. That's exactly what you need: is to have people who like kind of do specific things really well. And you just work as a t- like all the three of you guys seem you like you have individual strengths, and it's great that you work together with those. That's a re- I think that's a really good point. Um, I was saying to someone the other day, I was saying I don't think that I could do this without the band. You know, I think we all complement each other. Um, <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> what I mean is that probably we there's something lacking in each part of our characters, and that <laughs> someone feels that part of. So it kind of, uh, I don't know, sort of put the plaster on the, on the, uh, the wound of each mm-hmm. person. I think uh, together we're stronger without Sam and Tucci. Right, that sounds good. It's fine. Yeah. It's okay. It's it's okay to be honest. <laughs> it's okay to be honest. Um, I mean, I'm playing terrible, Logan. That's why I need I need Albert um, and the drum. <laughs> My rhythm's not great either. So. <laughs> Can't be a one man back. Good well good way to sell yourself. But it sounds good on the record, so please listen. <laughs> yeah, I will yeah. testify that I was really happy with what I heard from you guys. And I, I promise you I am really happy with what you've done with the new track. So I'll send that review through to you guys probably tomorrow when I've had some sleep. Awesome. But um basically I think this will probably be the final question for tonight or this morning for you guys. What do you see your future like as musicians? What where, where, where are you off to next in, in general? Where do you live? I live in New Zealand. But yeah, but which part? Christchurch and Canterbury. Uh, so we're off to Christchurch then. Next oh. step, Christchurch. Yeah. No, we um, Simon's got a strategic plan. That's what he tells us. So Simon, perhaps you'd be the best person to answer. Uh, I, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's pretty common sense. Um, just keep on doing what we're doing. Um, and I think what we're most looking forward to um, is to get back on stage and, and enjoy ourselves and, you know, have, create those memories and keep releasing music. And Alberto can talk about, you know, recording and stuff. But I think that it's, you know, we're, we're, we're here and... Um, to create memories and instead of worrying about what's inside those memories we kind of lose sight of of what we're doing you know so i think as the band as a band i think we just need to carry on learning and enjoying what we do recording playing live and and just you know 
I don't know, it's, 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 it's very difficult because when people send us stuff like, uh, you know, videos and this cool thing on the internet and they want to do collaborations, it's just amazing. So that's what really helps us. And when you're having a bad day and someone says, I listen to your songs and they cheered me up. You know, if you could just cheer one person up, it, it's enough, you know. So we want to keep doing that. Fantastic. That's fantastic. I really enjoyed talking to you guys tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, Logan. Thank you. Um, before we finish up, are there any places you'd like people to go to go check out your material? Uh, we are available on all digital platforms, Spotify, iTunes, etc., YouTube. Um, our Instagram is at, at alpha.circle. We are available on Twitter at real alpha circle, I believe. Mm-hmm. And on Facebook and all those, uh, those things. Uh, and anywhere else, uh, Alberto? PRK Music, or do you want to plug anything? Yeah. <laughs> we, we are going to be available in an interview, um, something like this, in TRK Music uh, web. And, and you, you can link to the other platforms. Thank, Thank you. you, Logan. It's been cool. Yeah, Alberto, Simon, and, and Lee. Si- I was about to say Simon and Richmond. Alberto, Simon, and Lee. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for your time, and you have a great morning, all right? Thanks. Yeah. Get some rest. Cheers, Logan. Yeah. Cheers. See you Bye. later. And that was my interview with Alpha Circle. I actually really enjoyed chatting to Alberto, Simon, and Lee. There are really a really bunch of cool characters. I I really want to hear more music from them. I really want to hear more in general from them. Um, hopefully, if you enjoyed, if you enjoyed listening to these guys chat about their music and their journey, you'll go and check out their various social medias and their links and all that kind of good stuff. Please do support them. They really care about what they're doing. And stay cool and stay safe. And please also remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. As they need the hell more than ever. With all the crazy stuff going on in the world. Catch your next interview. I got it right this time. Spider hands out.